This video demonstrates the proper procedures for determining the air content of freshly mixed concrete by the volumetric method. This air content test applies to concrete made with any type of aggregate as it is unaffected by air inside porous aggregate particles. Mixtures with aggregate that would be retained on a one and a half inch sieve shall be wet sieved over a one inch sieve. Due to its small size, the bowl of the volumetric meter is filled in two layers of equal depth. The use of 70% isopropyl alcohol is necessary to minimize the development of foam during the inversion and rolling of the meter. Should the air content of a mixture exceed 9%, water must be added to the meter using a calibrated cup having a capacity equal to 1% of the volume of the bowl. The equipment needed for this test includes a volumetric air meter, scoop, tamping rod, mallet, strike-off bar, funnel, syringe, 70% isopropyl alcohol, small measure, and a container of water. A volumetric air meter consists of a bowl, top section, clamp, and cap. The top section has a transparent scale which is graduated from 0% air at the top to 9% air at the bottom. Scale increments shall be no greater than one half percent. The clamp and cap provide a means to maintain a watertight system. The scoop shall be sized to obtain representative material from the receptacle and not spill as concrete is placed in the bowl. The tamping rod shall be a round, straight, smooth steel rod, high density polyethylene or other abrasion resistant plastic rod with a 5 8 inch diameter. It shall be at least 12 inches in length with the tamping end rounded to a hemispherical tip. The mallet is used to close voids left by the tamping rod and to release any large air bubbles trapped in the concrete. The strike-off bar shall be a flat, straight bar at least three-quarters of an inch wide and twelve inches long. Steel bars shall be at least one-eighth inch thick, while high-density polyethylene or other abrasion-resistant plastic bars shall be at least one-quarter inch thick. The funnel minimizes any disturbance to the top surface of the concrete as water and alcohol are added to the meter. 70% isopropyl alcohol is added to the meter using a measure with a capacity of at least one pint and graduations no larger than four ounces. A container of approximately one quart capacity and a syringe are used to add water to the zero mark on the meter. Begin by properly obtaining a representative sample of fresh concrete. Next, dampen the interior of the bowl. Using the scoop, place the first layer of concrete into the bowl. Move the scoop around the bowl to distribute the concrete. Consolidate the concrete by rotting the layer through its depth 25 times, no more and no less. Now tap the exterior of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. Add the second layer of concrete to the bowl. Rod the layer 25 times 
the rod should penetrate through the second layer and into the first layer approximately one inch. Tap the exterior of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. If necessary, add or remove representative material to correct a deficiency or excess. Approximately 1 8 inch of material above the rim of the bowl is acceptable. Strike off any excess concrete using the strike off bar until the concrete surface is flush with the top of the bowl. Then thoroughly clean the flange and rim of the bowl. Next, Dampen the inside of the top section along with the O-ring. Now, seat the top section on the bowl and engage the clamping mechanism. Insert the funnel into the neck of the meter. Then add at least one pint of water, followed by the selected amount of isopropyl alcohol. Record the volume of alcohol added. Continue adding water to the meter. The funnel can be removed after water appears in the neck. Adjust the liquid level until the bottom of the meniscus is in line with the zero mark on the neck. Now secure the watertight cap. With a firm grip on the unit, immediately begin the process of inverting the meter and shaking the base horizontally. Do not keep the meter inverted for more than 5 seconds at a time as aggregate can become lodged in the neck. Quickly repeat the inversion and shaking process for a minimum of 45 seconds until the concrete has broken free from the bowl and aggregate can be heard moving in the meter. When the inversion process is complete, place the meter on the work surface. With one hand cradling the neck and the other on the flange, tilt the meter approximately 45 degrees from vertical. Begin rolling the meter vigorously back and forth, rotating the bowl about one quarter to one half turn. Quickly start and stop each roll. Occasionally, turn the meter about one-third of a rotation of the bowl. Continue rolling the meter for a minimum of one minute. Aggregate must be heard sliding in the meter. Now set the meter upright. Loosen the cap to relieve any pressure. and allow the liquid level to stabilize. The liquid level is considered stable when it does not change more than one quarter percent within a two-minute period. 
A test is invalid and must be repeated if the meter leaks during inversion or rolling. If it takes more than six minutes for the liquid level to stabilize or if there is more foam than the equivalent of 2% air above the liquid in the neck. Once the liquid level is stable, read the level to the bottom of the meniscus. Record this value to the nearest quarter percent. This value is termed the initial meter reading. In order to confirm the initial meter reading, it is necessary to roll the meter a second time. Follow all of the same procedures and satisfy all of the same requirements as for the first rolling. Roll the meter for a minimum of one minute. Set the unit upright. Loosen the cap and allow the liquid level to stabilize. As before, the liquid level is stable when it does not change more than one quarter percent in two minutes. Again, confirm that the meter is not leaking, the liquid level is stable within six minutes, and any foam is less than the equivalent of two percent air. Read the liquid level to the bottom of the meniscus and record this value to the nearest quarter percent. This value is termed the second meter reading. If the initial and second meter readings are within one quarter percent of each other, the second reading becomes the final meter reading. If the initial and second readings are not within one quarter percent, it is necessary to roll the meter a third time. Follow all of the same procedures and satisfy all of the same requirements as for both previous rollings. Record the third reading to the nearest quarter percent. If the second and third readings are within one quarter percent of each other, the third reading becomes the final meter reading. If the readings are not within a quarter percent, the test is invalid and must be repeated. With two consecutive air content readings within one quarter percent, disassemble the meter and dump out the contents of the bowl. Examine the bowl for evidence of undisturbed, tightly packed concrete. If no such material is present, the test is complete and the results are valid. However, if such material is present, the test is declared invalid and must be repeated. The final meter reading must be corrected for the amount of isopropyl alcohol used, as well as the addition of any calibrated cups of water. The correction for alcohol content is found in Table 1 of the standard. The final air content value is found by subtracting the alcohol correction from the final meter reading and then adding the number of calibrated cups of water used. Record the final air content to the nearest quarter percent. Refer to the data sheet related to this training module for a copy of the data collected during this demonstration and any associated computations. Also, refer to the slide presentation related to this training module for a set of example computations and a practice problem. Don't forget to clean your equipment.